Do you know how many exceptions are there to choose from in UiPath? Me neither. I wanted to start counting them, but yeah, you can see why I gave up. However, there are five main exceptions. Well, actually six, and we will see them in the video later on. What is an exception? One definition is that of an event that occurs during the execution of a program that disrupts its normal flow. This is okay during development time, as it points out to the developer where the issues are with the code or working environment. But in production, we don't want our programs to fail even if there is a problem with our code or with the systems we are interacting with. So we have to make sure these execution disruptions are being taken care of. Now, there are many types of such disruptions, and here are the most important five. Argument exception, when one of the arguments of a workflow is um, not valid or it's null. Null reference exception, when using a variable that has not been initialized, for example, a list. IO exception, usually when files are not where they are expected to be. Invalid operation exception, this could be thrown sometimes by activities that are being cancelled, for example, in a parallel or pick activity. And uh, the generic system exception, this is the most general exception classification. Now, if we have an all-encompassing generic exception, like system exception, why do we need to bother with all these other ones? Here we need to mention the general to specific rule. Imagine your bots are working in a very unstable environment, and multiple things could happen. Some data could be missing or wrongly entered by users, or an app could crash, or internet might drop. Is it all the same to you if one or the other occurs? If you know that there is an issue with some missing files, maybe the bot could take a specific action, like run a routine that would ensure that those files are made available. Or if the web application is unavailable because the internet connection has dropped, Maybe trying after one minute will be successful. So it is useful to be able to distinguish between the different exception types and cater for each one of them with different actions. This is done with the try-catch activity. But before we move to that, let us mention one more thing. All the exceptions we have seen so far are application or system exceptions. There is one more type of exception that is very important, the business exception. An application exception describes an error rooted in um, a technical issue, such as an application that is not responding. And these kind of issues have a chance of being solved simply by retrying the transaction um, as the application can unfreeze. A business exception describes an error rooted in the fact that certain data, which the automation project depends on, is incomplete or missing. Retrying the transaction does not yield any chance of solving the issue, and there are other better courses of action, such as, for example, notifying the user um, of this error. One more thing that distinguishes the application from business exceptions is the way they occur. Application exceptions are typically thrown by the system, but a business exception is typically thrown by the programmer when something is wrong with the data and processing of that item does not make sense anymore, and somebody has to be informed about it. Okay, so now that we have mentioned most of the theory about exceptions, let us see a short practical example. I have a very short demo here, um, where I'm just reading from an Excel file some stock tickers. Here is the Excel file. I have a file called shares, and these are the stock tickers I am uh, reading, uh, five companies, and basically I'm just entering them into Yahoo Finance and getting back the percentage of uh, the price going up or down, and if the price has dropped with more than 2%, I want to get an alert uh, because I might want to buy some more. Okay, so this is the Excel file 
we have five companies here. We have the stock ticker, uh, the abbreviation, and then the full company name. And let's have a look at the code. I am reading here the Excel file, and I am wrapping this in a try catch activity with two catches. One is for the IO exception, one is for argument exception. And in the catch itself, I'm just uh, outputting a message. So this is just for testing purpose to see which exception is um, is being thrown or and, and caught. So um, this is my catch here. And then the second part, also wrapped in the try catch, is basically um, entering in the browser um, the stock ticker in Yahoo Finance. Uh, then I click on search. I'm getting the percentage of the price difference. Then I'm checking if actually the, re the return page contains my company name because what's happening on Yahoo Finance is that if um, I am entering here a stock name um, which does not exist, yeah, but it's rather close, yeah, it might return a different company and not give me uh, like an error message or a different page. So I've entered a different stock ticker, but I've got this Invesco QQQ Trust. So just make sure that um, this doesn't happen and uh, I get the expected percentage return. I'm checking the company name here, returned with the one in Excel. Yeah, so, and this is the place where I would want to throw a business exception if the names don't match, because it means that something is wrong with the data here and whatever stock ticker throws this exception actually doesn't exist. So after checking the company name, I'm just uh, getting the percentage of the difference. I'm using uh, here regex to extract the percentage. So I'm basically saying uh, extract from this string return. So the string will be something like this. So a minus or a plus, uh, a number, then brackets, a minus or a plus, a number and percentage, and close the bracket at the end. And then I'm just uh, returning this and then um, I'm checking if, if the price has dropped. So if the percentage uh, contains a minus, it means the price has dropped. And then if the drop is more than 2%, I'm using regex again to extract the actual number. So I'm dropping the brackets and the percentage at the end. Yeah, I have here the minus and my expression here in the brackets and uh, this will return uh, just the actual number uh, with a minus or a plus. And um, then I'm just converting to, to integer uh, this expression and um, then if percentage is, is higher than two, uh, then basically I'm sending this message. This probably would be an, an email if I would be using this uh, in real life, sending me an email and say, hey, this stock uh, has uh, uh, downtrended Maybe it's a good time to buy some more. And I'm just going back to the main, to the home page, and going on the next stock. Yeah, in a, everything in a for loop. So this is the code. Yeah, let's run it. I have here several exceptions. So for the second one, I have a sector not found exception, a business exception, and the generic exception. So it would be interesting to see how the program would react if we didn't have this exception. So I would take the read, the reading of the file out of the try-catch block. So now no, no exception handling will be done for it. And let me try to play between the data. Let's make the file unavailable. Let's call it something else. So the system would not find it anymore. And let's run. And what's happening? We get a runtime execution error. The Excel file doesn't exist, yeah, as expected. Now let's see what would happen if we would have this in a try catch block. And here I have two exceptions because I'm not sure actually which one will be triggered. Would it be an input output exception? The file doesn't exist. I would expect that. And I have also the argument exception. So let's run again. Right, so now this is, this is a sign that um, actually yeah, the system has a problem finding the Excel file, the input file, because it's just waiting. And in a few seconds, we should get the uh, result 
or the exception that is being thrown and also hopefully being caught by the try catch activity yeah so you see we have now no error like we had before interrupting the workflow uh, we have the argument exception being caught and therefore we get this this lock message saying system argument exception caught yeah so interesting enough this file doesn't exist exception was actually an argument exception and not an io exception as maybe i would have expected in the beginning anyway so this is the first block and then the, for the second block we get this uh, selector not found exception uh, because it has nothing to do it had nothing to do in the second part so let's put this back and let's um, start start running this and I would run it and then close the browser so simulate a crash to see what's happening yeah so I go back to the main page of Yahoo Finance and I'm running the bot and I will just stop some of the execution Right, there we go. I've just closed the browser window and let's see the log. So it has run for the first stock ticker. It got a percentage, it was minus one. So not more than 2%. Then it took the next one. This was minus uh, 4.65. So actually here um, it could have run the last part of the workflow, but I just stop, stop the browser. So it, it um, got the system exception encountered yeah yeah depending on when I'm stopping the workflow it could be one thing or the other exception so we have here select or not found exception we have the system exception the more generic one and the business rule exception the business rule exception would be when as, as we uh, saw before when the company names don't match it means actually that uh, the stock ticker doesn't exist so we can try to simulate that as well let's go back to Yahoo Finance and uh, again, let's play here with uh, one of the company names. And um, we will see in the comparison that uh, that will fail and throw the business exception. So let's run again the program. We got the first company. Get the second one now. And we get the business exception and sending an email to admin. Of course, I'm not sending an e email now but uh, I would uh, do that in a real life example. All right, so we have seen what's happening when we are closing the browser while running. Uh, we've seen a business exception. Um, now something to mention here, um, in this case, uh, when an exception is caught, so the system stops or the, the automation stops graciously, but what would happen in a real life example where I would have this code embedded in a framework is that if I had multiple items, the framework would continue to run. Um, in case of a system or application exception, um, it would retry the same item uh, depending on the max retry setting, either in the framework or in the queue, if it's an example with a queue. So if we have a max retry of, uh, of three, it will retry the three times the same item and maybe restart the browser, for example, if that was the issue. But if it encountered a business exception, then what would happen is that the um, automation will go to the next item because it makes no sense to retry finding a stock ticker which doesn't exist, for example, in our, in our case. So this is the difference. Uh, application ex exception would be retried. Uh, business exception would just be logged and the automation would not crash, but would move to the next item. Yeah, so... I hope that this little code example was useful to illustrate some of the exceptions um, and the way to handle them, as well as the main difference between application and business exceptions. And when developing automations, always use a framework uh, that deals by default with many of these possible exceptions. And you don't have to think about all of the possible places where uh, it could crash. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing, because why not? Uh, this will help the channel in a big way. Thank you for your attention and have a great day.